let's see. First on my screen is Betty Withrow. Welcome. Thank you, Gina. Yes, I'm Betty Withrow of the Writer's Launchpad. I'm the owner and operator of the Writer's Launchpad. I'm a, an author and a blogger and a workshop leader and a speaker. I provide author support. I write copy for marketing materials. And I'm kind of, uh, I'll do whatever it takes to get the project across the finish line. Uh, I just did a workshop with a, a different network last week and it was a great success. I'm using that, uh, that impetus to build out some more dynamic materials for future workshops. And uh, I look forward to presenting them when I have them ready. Awesome. Awesome. Betty, Betty is great. If you haven't had, a, if you are writing a book and you haven't sat down with Betty, she's, she'll just give you ideas and pull things out of your head. All right, next, Tammy Jones. Tell us who, who you are, where you're from, and all about what you do. Uh, Tammy Jones uh, with the Edward Jones here in the Carmel office. And um, originally from Denver, but I've been living here on the coast basically since 87. Uh, I was stationed at Fort Ord in the military and um, just fell in love with the area. And I'm doing a showcase today, so I'll, I'll kind awesome. of keep information for that. Great. And for those of you that don't know, showcases, you get to do one a year and you get, how long do you get? Um, five five minutes. You get five <laughs> minutes to talk all about your business. And it's really fun and we really get to know you better. And, and that's one of the benefits of membership. Patty, even though I'm going to introduce you to speak, why don't you say something? <laughs> I'm excited to be here and, am I muted? No, okay. No, I'm excited to be here and my name is Patty Farmer from Dallas, Texas. And what I do is marketing and media as you're gonna find out when you hear me. But who I am at the core is I am a people connector. And so the most valuable thing I feel that we have right now is relationships are the currency. So it's all about nurturing those relationships. So that's what I'm all about. Awesome, thank you. Patty, Leah. You're on mute, Leah. Oh, there you go. Hi, everyone. Um, very nice to see all of you. Um, I'm born and raised on the Monterey Peninsula. Um, I'm a, a former nurse for 20 years, uh, turned uh, licensed in River. And I'm just starting out. Um, I'm actually with uh, a group called Symmetry Financial Group, but I am an independent. So um, I am able to protect, um, you know, friends and family and, you know, really anyone else. So, it's been a really nice change, um, really enjoying it. And, um, you know, so I'm really just here to meet um, other professional women and, you know, make friends and, and learn uh, really um, all about, you know, um, how to promote my business, but really uh, mostly just to be around um, other professional women like yourself and to learn um, really um, more about, um, you know, different aspects of, um, you know, how to promote, but also just um, be inspired um, by, by all of you. Thank you. That's we'll get really look, look forward to get to knowing you better. I just want to give you a quick tip. If you see that your internet is wonky, turn off your camera and you might save some bandwidth. Then we could hear you better even though we couldn't see you. But uh, that's, yeah. we got kind of like some word skip there, but, but, but that gives us a chance to get together and learn more about each other. So, All right, let's move on to Sandra Collingwood. Hello, everyone. I'm Sandra Collingwood. Can everybody hear me? Yes? Yes. 
Uh, yes, my business is Super Spotter Cat Remover. Wonderful product here. And uh, we can help you remove rough spots in your life. We've been in business 38 years here on the peninsula. And we mix okay. the product in our own home, which is wonderful because we have permission from the city of Monterey. They came out and inspected our little place where we do our mixing. So we mix and we market, and then we sell primarily to people in the community uh, out, out to Salinas, but not beyond. We did try getting online uh, and it just didn't work. So we're very local and it's, uh, it's a wonderful product and will save you a lot of money. That's it. Great, thank you. Marian, you're up. Okay, hi there. I'm Marian Gellatly. I'm the founder of Powerful Presence, an image management training and consulting firm. And I especially love working with women who want to show up powerfully and authentically as well. And I help them do that through their style and their wardrobe and their professional presence and brand. I'm a workshop leader, I'm an author, and I am doing a lot of work right now virtually. Thank goodness for Zoom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Next, I see Megan Mertz. You're up. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Megan Mertz. I am the business development coordinator for the premier local restoration company, Disaster Cleanup Specialists. We have been the trusted provider for over 35 plus years. We specialize in all your restoration needs, whether it be wind, water, COVID cleans, and definitely fire. And I'm also your PWN membership chair. Awesome, thank you. Looks like now we have Debbie Campbell, you're up. Hi, I'm Debbie Campbell, and I just joined PWN after the last meeting, and I recently um, moved back to the peninsula, and my business is Touchstone Crystal by Swarovski. So it's the home-based division of Swarovski Crystal, so it's beautiful jewelry, and in this virtual world, I just love for the chance the ladies to get together, see their friends that they don't get to see anymore, and even across the country and they get lots of free sparkly jewelry so it's a win-win and i love meeting new people and i love this group already it's very ins a bunch of ins inspirational ladies so thank you all right jody royer you're next hi everyone good afternoon i'm the pwn technology chairperson for the last two years i help uh, build maintain uh, the website and do the email marketing <coughs> I've been in uh, digital marketing for, uh, boy, since 1990. And I am a consultant for CEO, web design, marketing, and sales. And I help people build their online presence affordably. Thank you for, uh, for being here, everybody. All right, Jody, nice to see you too. I'll go next. And then last, we'll have our president go and then let her give a president's message. I am Gina Estrada with Estrada and Associates. I built my business becoming a business networking excerpt, expert, author, and speaker. We have a lot of clients across the nation. I manage a team of four, soon to be five, advisors and two assistants, and we manage over $100 million. I am also the, well, last year and this year, the programs coordinator for PWN, and I get to book all the fabulous speakers, which are a lot of my good friends, and very ex you guys, Patty's going to blow you away, I'm just going to tell you right now. Uh, so make sure you have something to take notes on, whether it's electronically or your paper's next to you, you're going to want to know what she has to say. And so with that, I'm going to introduce our president, AKA okay. Megan Mertz, her name is Teresa Ream. <laughs> it's one of those days. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I'm Megan Mertz. I think, Megan, I need to talk to our IT. 
<laughs> my other computer wouldn't work, so I ran upstairs and got this one. Um, I don't like the camera angle because it goes up my nose, but we're gonna we're just gonna go with it today. Um, Teresa Reem with Disaster Special Cleanup Specialists, Floor Store USA, and Cypress Cabinets, and I'm also your 2020 president. Um, I'm not going to yay. I'm not going to say much today because I really want to hear what Patty Farmer has to say. She got a lot of great information, so I'm going to keep it real short. And I just wanted to remind you of our sponsor is um, Jocelyn Driscoll with ACN. And today's raffle is a $50 gift certificate to Mara Lee's clothes design on Canary Row. So Megan, if you win it, I think I can get yours too because I'm Megan today. So let's get let's get on with the program. And are we, um, Gina? Are we going to have our um, showcase first, or well, we are going to have our showcase? But we want to make sure we're giving Patty. Oh, I moved my clock. It used to be over here. Now it's right there. Uh, we want to make sure she has her 40 minutes because she has an hour's worth of information. So mm -hmm. uh, real quick, Kimberly Anks just joined us. I would like her to introduce herself, tell us who you are and what you do, Kimberly. She's still connecting. We'll let her go after um, Patty speaks. Uh, don't let me forget though. So real quick, um, Teresa, AK Megan, there should be a little blue box in your right hand corner with three dots on it. If you click that, you might be able to rename yourself. Okay, I'll try to figure it out with being, uh, or I may do it after, so I'm not too much of a distraction <laughs> during the meeting. Okay, Marilyn, go ahead and introduce our, uh, Marion, sorry. Th that's okay. Introduce okay. our showcase. Wonderful, I will introduce you to Tammy Jones. And Tammy Jones is no ordinary financial advisor. With her extensive 25 plus years, you look too young for that. But anyway, 25 plus year background in financial planning and investment. Her work goes far beyond providing investment advice. She particularly has a passion for supporting and empowering women with their financial future. And she's been very active in organizations um, on the, in the Monterey Peninsula. Uh, she has completed leadership Salinas Valley and was given the Athena Award Businesswoman of the Year. So she told you she's from Denver. She came to California in 1987 and has never left. So we're very happy to have Tammy Jones representing Edward Jones. Welcome, Tammy. And I'll Thanks. go ahead and do five minutes and I'll give you a little two minute prompt and a 30 second prompt, okay? Okay, great, thank you. All right, go for it. So thank you, Mary, I appreciate that introduction and thank you ladies for all being here today. So yes, I am a financial advisor and I think for most people that means I help with their investments. And yes, I do do that. However, it's a small part of my overall relationship with each of my clients. Um, I typically incorporate a client's full financial picture when I begin working with them. I've done this in part because I understand that um, most people would rather have a tooth pulled rather than focus on their finances for some reason. Um, in fact, there was a study done in 2014 that showed um, of a thousand respondents, 50% spent five hours researching a car purchase. However, only 11% spent the same amount of time on their investments and only one third spent less than an hour on them. So one of my main goals over the years has been to try to make my clients feel more comfortable and empowered about their investments and finances in general by knowing their full financial picture. Um, along with the tools that I have at Edward Jones, it allows me to answer an array of financial questions that may come up over your lifetime, such as, can I afford to take this big vacation that I wasn't planning on? Should I finance or pay cash for my car? Um, and then out to, can I move to a assisted living facility without running out of money? So additionally, the value I add for my clients goes beyond the typical performance of investments. Um, I'm looking at capital gains, how to minimize your taxable income. Um, should you be using a different type of retirement plan? 
um, how are assets titled, should beneficiaries be changed. So different things that can affect your overall um, finances over the long run. I'll end with a, um, a quick favorite story of mine that is actually a true story and involves my mother-in-law who, um, she was married to my father-in-law for over 10 years, but they had been divorced for 30 and she had remarried. Um, and uh, both um, gentlemen had passed away. So I had tried to encourage her to go to social security and because she, I felt that she could get some of um, her first husband's social security and she just kept kind of poo-pooing me. And after about the third or fourth prod, um, she finally went and she ended up getting an extra $1,200 a month from social security, which for her was great because she was basically going from check to check. Um, so that was a great situation. And I became one of my, one of my mother-in-law's favorite individuals. <laughs> um, so if you know someone who could benefit with an initial meeting with me or um, you yourself, please, please feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to review what you have and provide some guidance on your overall picture at no cost. Um, lastly, there have also been some IRS changes this year. Many of you are probably familiar with the CARES Act, but there was also the SECURE Act that was passed um, in January of this year. Both of those affect uh, retirement plans, contributions, distributions, education. So if you're interested in write-ups on each of those, um, you can also send me an email and I'll, mail, I'll email those out to you. Um, and then if you have any questions, you can feel free to give me a call. Um, thank you all again for your time. I really appreciate it. I look forward to meeting all of you in the near future and to um, learn how I can help promote your businesses. I'm also on LinkedIn and Facebook, and I often um, post educational articles online. Um, and then I do workshops, and um, they're not always around investments, but um, we've got one in about three weeks on Medicare. So it's kind of an array of topics, and it's informal, so it allows you to ask some questions. Thank you so much for your time today, and I'm looking forward to the program with Patty. Thank you so much, Tammy. I All right. I mean, <laughs> you did perfect. Okay. Perfect. Good. <laughs> perfect. All right. Getting on with our program speaker today, I'm very excited to introduce you to my really good friend, Patty Farmer. She is an award winning marketing and media strategist, international speaker, podcast host, magazine publisher, and event producer. She works with small business owners, entrepreneurs, and speakers to attract and convert their ideal clients so they can make big impact in the world and bigger deposits in their bank account. We all want that, right? Mm -hmm. Patty believes we all have a message and a mission. Her mission is to help them master their marketing, leverage the media, and monetize their business in a way that creates transformation for both them and their clients while designing a lifestyle they want to live. The title of her presentation today, let's welcome Patty Farmer in taking advantage of free publicity. Get your pens and papers out, ladies. You're gonna wanna know this stuff. All right, Patty, it's up to you. You have 40 minutes. You. you asked me to give you a five minute thing, so I will. I did. And I'm timing <clears throat> you right now. Okay. Okay. Do, do I have, do I have sharing capacity here so I can share screen? So share screen. I think Megan can give you permission there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think I gave you permission, Patty. Did you? Yes. Are you guys seeing the, what are you seeing? Your slideshow. Are you guys seeing my screen or are you seeing a button, that, a thing that says Zoom? No, we're seeing um, Marketing Media magaz Magazine, uh, podcast, microphone. Okay, good, Taking perfect. advantage, Patty Farmer. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> now my new computer has more than one screen. I wanted to make sure it shared the right screen. <laughs> so we're gonna talk today about taking advantage of free publicity, which I think is really exciting. And it's something that I'm very, very passionate about. And we all love it when we can do things that are free, right? 
So let's get started. Oh, let's. Oh, yeah, two computers is kind of difficult. <laughs> All right, here we go. So what I'd like to do now is really quick, I'm gonna show you guys some pictures. I wanna know everybody that's in the room, kind of where you're at when you're thinking about publicity. So I'm gonna show you some pictures. There's a letter in the corner. I want you to find the one that represents you the best and put it in the chat, okay? So when you think about publicity, PR, media, all of that, does this represent you? Does this represent you? Does this represent you? <laughs> maybe this, or maybe this, <laughs> <laughs> right? One of them, sometimes it's more than one, but let's just kind of just kind of feel like, what are you really thinking about right now? Um, we're gonna get you back to that smiley face when we're done today, but I know that we're always in a lot of different places, so it's always kind of nice to know where you start, right? So let's kind of look at that. So who am I? Gina really pretty much told you who I was and, um, and Gina would know <laughs> since I've known Gina for many years now. Really, honestly, the only reason why these things are really important is just so that you really understand that I have done every single thing I'm going to show you today myself and successfully. But really, the most important thing here really is what I said, which is that I'm a people connector. And it is probably the way that I have built my business is by building relationships and nurturing them. And I always like to tell people, you already know the 10 people who will probably get you to where you want to go, right? And if you just nurture those relationships and just know how to ask the right questions, I think those are the two skills that you really need to know. But that's what you really need to know about me. But I want you to know about what we're going to talk about, though, is multimedia. So we're going to cover a lot of different ways. So if you see something or I talk about something and you're thinking to yourself, mm, I don't know if I can really do that. That's OK, because I'm going to give you a lot of choices. And so just go on to a choice that works for you because you don't have to do them all. You just have to find the ones that are right for you. But first, let's talk about what PR and publicity is not, because it's always good to know what it's not, right? So it's not guaranteed. It's not quick, it's not sales, and it's not advertising, which is what most of the time people think. PR, a lot of people think that PR stands for a press release. It actually stands for public relations, and relations is the most important part. It goes back to that relationship that we were talking about. PR plays a vital part in really your brand. Right, it's really, really important about your brand. We're gonna talk about that briefly because I think it's important, um, but it's really a part of your business strategy that should include marketing, branding, and of course, a customer experience that your customer knows that you are delivering to them superior, right? Better than anybody else. But together, those are the building blocks that will really build your business. So you can't do PR by itself. It won't do it for you. But if you combine that with branding and marketing and advertising, it is gonna be vital to your overall business strategy. So here's what I always like to say. Publicity is what shapes your message, but media is what provides the megaphone. So really that's why both things are. So a lot of times people are like, oh, because publicity is a lot of things that you're going to do. I'm going to talk to you today about both of them and how you can integrate them both. And sometimes it's so seamless that you won't even realize you've moved from one to the other. But shaping your message is important, but having that megaphone to get it out is actually really where the money is. So now let's talk about what is media, right? So here we talked about publicity, but what is media? So in essence, media is really the communication channels, which literally everything, news, entertainment, data, education, is distributed. And it literally includes every broadcasting medium that has reach or influences people. So internet, magazine, newspapers, television, radio, all of those things are media outlets. So again, if there's one that you really love, great. If there's one you don't like, that's great too. You just need to know which one works for you so that you're comfortable in it. But if you can do a little bit of each one of them, 
that way it's kind of like I always want to say, you know how everybody likes to either get a text or you like email or you want a phone call. We all have that preferred way that we like to communicate and be communicated to. It's kind of the same way. You're going to find your favorites. You're also going to find that within your industry, it may seem that certain industries prefer one versus the other as well. You may be in an industry that does a lot of reading articles. You may be in an industry that maybe your audience really wants to hear it in a podcast. So there's a lot of different ways to do it, but you get to choose. But if you know what your brand is and you keep to your brand voice, you'll have a hit. Okay, so now talking about brand, I think it's really important. We're only gonna talk about it for a second, but before you really go out there and start doing any type of PR or marketing even, you really need to know your brand. A lot of times people think that your brand is your logo and your font and the colors, and that is not, those are your brand assets. Your brand, it isn't even what you think. It isn't even what you say. It's what your customer thinks, feel, say, and share, right? We live in a world where it's really all about sharing, right? So that's what your brand is. It's also like, have you ever had anybody introduce you or you're in a room at an event and they're talking to somebody else and they say, oh, you need to know such and such. And then they start saying about you and you're like, where'd they get that? <laughs> right? Like, you know, you're thinking, where did they get that information? Right? The thing is, that's what they thought your brand was. Right? So if somebody's introducing you or they're talking about you and it's not what you think it is, it's because you haven't done a very good job with your brand. Right, so you need to make sure that you get really clear on your brand, what you want people to feel and say and think. And probably a way to think about it is, what do you want people to say about you when you're not in the room? That's kind of really what you want your brand to be. What is it that you want them to say about you if you weren't in the room? Think about that, that is your brand. So before you worry about publicity or media, make sure your brand is done, and then you can talk about brand strategy. So what's brand strategy opposed to brand? This is where you get to figure out who you are, what your story is, how to tell your story, so you go from told to sold. So that's what I always want people to remember. You want to tell your story in a way that you go from told to sold, and then you need to make sure that you stick to that story across everywhere, all your social media platforms, all your marketing platforms, all your media platforms, you need to make sure that you have a consistent brand. And so your strategy really needs to be in how you tell your story of who you are and how you go from told to sold. So if you just kind of think that in your mind, told to sold. <laughs> and then the last thing I wanna say about branding is you need to ensure that your content reflects your brand's voice. We used to live in a time where whenever people wanted to know, we just went to Google and typed in. You know, we used to go in there and we type in whatever we wanted and Google would tell us, right? But we live in a world right now where Google is the information, we're in the transformation business and we're not the only one. Pinterest is not a social media platform, it's a visual search engine like Google. But the bottom line is that now, right now, 74% of all searches are done with voice. People go to their, I'm not gonna say her name because she'll start talking, <laughs> But now we ask questions to that. We talk to our phone. You know, we talk to whatever our voice activated devices and we ask questions that way. But we're still doing all of our marketing and telling our story and our brand and everything like we're typing into Google. We need to use our voice like how people would really be talking in their phone to find you. So it's a new way to think about it. It's not just how does Google do SEO anymore. It's really about your brand and your voice. So make sure that your content of everything you're putting out has your brand's voice. Okay, so it's a crowded market. It's a crowded market out there. You have to be able to stop the scroll. There's a lot of noise. How are you going to stand out? And that's really what I'm going to talk about today. So with all of that, we're going to go in now. So I hope you guys are ready because now we're going to get into the diving deep here. So first I want to talk about tips to get free publicity locally. So first of all, if you want coverage like at a local business publication, you're going to find plenty of them. Go to Google, 
go into one of your talking devices and just say, because the book of list celebration, corporate philanthropy, fastest growing companies, 40 under 40, these are all business publications that are local and it's very, very easy to be able to utilize them. Um, just so that you know, at the very end, the very last thing I'm going to give you is a list of slides. I mean, excuse me, a list of resources of all the places to go to get everything. So um, we'll give you that at the end. That'll make it nice and easy for you. But just so you know, this is where you can locally go to lots and lots of publications. So here's the my top three ways that I have gotten a lot of free publicity for myself as well as for my clients. So one of them, donate a percent of proceeds from your book or an event to a charity. There's a lot of charities that do a lot of events, right? Sports things, right? You know, um, breast cancer walks. There's a lot of things that you can do there and you'll get local media for that. So whenever you're doing something to give back, you can get a lot of media for that. You can sponsor local events and piggyback on their media coverage. And my favorite way is to monitor the news and see where your area of expertise might fit with a reporter or a news outlet. And this is called newsjacking. So I have to tell you, newsjacking is one of my absolute favorite ways. And I'm going to give you a couple examples because people always ask me all the time, newsjacking. So some of the most famous ways have been, you may remember several years ago when the lights went out at the Super Bowl. Within 15 minutes, Oreo came out and said, it's okay, you can dunk in the dark, right? It was famous. They literally inserted their brand in that, right? You know, that was one. Another one that happened is when, I won't mention any names, when that airline had somebody bullied on their plane and they had to drag somebody off. Um, Southwest came out and said, we beat up on prices, not our customers, right? So look for things that are happening now I'm going to give you an example of something I did for one of my clients and I'm going to tell you how at least three of you that are here on the call could be doing this right now. So I had a client that is a financial advisor and she lived in Florida and that was when all the hurricanes were happening. And so every single time we would hear on the news or from a journalist, and I'm sure I want you to think about it. How many times do you hear a journalist and they say the same thing over and over? And you think, are we going to get any new information? They say the same thing over and over. That's because that's all the information they have. So that means somebody isn't giving them good information and this is your job, right? To give them something else to say. So what we did was why everybody was talking, every journalist was talking about how you needed to be prepared for an emergency, kind of like what's happening in California right now, right? You know, everybody's talking about the fires and, and everything. In this case, they were talking about hurricanes. And everybody was talking about how you needed to be, you know, planning for an emergency or how you might need to evacuate. So what I did is I started pitching my client to all of these news reporters on how, while everybody's worrying about that, why is nobody worrying about, you know, being prepared for a financial emergency, right? They're all prepared for this hurricane. Maybe they're all prepared for the fire, but why aren't they being prepared? for a financial emergency. And that was a different hook. And we were able to insinuate her business. We got her on every single channel. And as a matter of fact, we actually got her all the way to Capitol Hill. So it's happening right now in California. What is happening in your business that you can insinuate in the news by twisting it a little way or giving a hook? For financial advisors, it's really easy. There's always all types of emergencies that are happening right now and stuff and talking about how you can financially handle emergency is a really, really easy way to news jack. But just think about what can you do to news jack and put your brand in the news. And you can do this actually locally or nationally. So here's a few. Here's what some of the things you wanna do. Do something different. If you do something different, I have to tell you, journalists here average all day long. Pitch, 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 and it's just average stuff. Do something different, they wanna talk about it. Another way is win an award. If you win an award, believe me, coverage of awards is every press staple, right? Every newspaper, every magazine is going to pick up somebody who's won an award, right? And it's not that hard to, to get an award. And you can do that locally again or nationally, but it is easy to get written up for that. Use your inventory. Now, I'm going to tell you a story about a real estate agent. I know personally that Gina has done this. It was a story that she had shared with me about her gallery. 
So I know Gina has done it. So use the inventory that you have. So a real estate brokerage, they can offer their office space, their luxury brands to host parties, magazine spreads, all this type of stuff. And in exchange, they just get press mentions, right? This is how you get press or party invites, right? Which really can allow for the ultimate networking event. I have to tell you here, here's one of the ways that I have used inventory. We're always looking for places to have photo shoots for our pictures. Here's a great way to do it. If you know a real estate agent, and who doesn't know one or 10, real estate agent who um, can get you into model homes or into those luxury homes. I have to tell you one of the things I've done for my clients is get them to be able to go into the models before the models open in those beautiful, beautiful model homes. And you're not doing anything to dirty it. You're just putting up a camera and a tripod and they've taken all kinds of photo shoots for all of their videos in those model homes great way to get to be able to get free publicity there all you have to do is tell the realtor who got you in there that you're going to credit give her some type of credit i've got my clients to go to some million dollar homes right that are for sale and they'll let us come in and film there so if you know somebody who does that it is a great opportunity for you to be able to use that to get free publicity and then all you have to do is mention who it is that allowed you to do it so you don't have to pay to go stay in a studio. You don't have to pay to get all these fancy places, figure out how you're gonna get pictures. Call up your local realtor because she's going to know somebody who can get you in. It's a great relationship to build. So now let's talk about how you can do it nationally. So on a national level, write articles about influencers or influential blogs. I have to tell you, there's a whole website that does these top 10, top 10 this, top 10 this. If you write an article and you pull in people who are top of their game in your industry and you mention them and you let them know that not only did you mention them, but you actually mentioned and positioned them in a way that they are at top of their game, believe me, they're going to share it on all their social media. They're going to um, you know, maybe put a link back you know, because they're going to want to be able to utilize that. But being associated with somebody who's at a very high level in your industry can really help you and you will get multiple. I mean, I've had my clients get hundreds and hundreds of thousands of shares for something by just talking about great things that other people are doing in their industry. This is a great way for you to be able to get free publicity. Okay, so another way that you can do it is you can leverage a calendar of events and determine which ones you can tie your business to to make your story relevant to the media. And there's a couple ways to do it. Locally, we'll go there first. Locally, you probably have lots of event calendars, directories in your town that you can look up and find out what is happening, right? And then figure out again, like newsjacking, figure out how can you tie your brand to that story and make it interesting to the media. This is a great way if you're a speaker to be able to do it on a national level too. Right now, we're all speaking virtually, right? We're not all traveling. You know, normally I'm out of the country traveling. I don't always get to do virtual speaking. Now we are because we're not traveling. But guess what? There are all kinds of organizations there's your organization, there's eWomen, there's NABO, there's ABWA. There's all type of organizations that usually only bring in speakers who belong to that organization. But now you can just go to NABO, which is National Association of Women Business Owners, if you didn't know. Um, you can go to NABO and look at their national one and then go to all the cities. So find cities that are by you or national, whichever you want, and you just look at their event tab. And you will see all the type of people that they're having speak and you can put in to speak there. Two weeks ago on Monday, I was in Philadelphia. On Tuesday, I was in New Mexico. On Wednesday, I was in New Jersey. And I was speaking at organizations I didn't even belong to because they all need speakers with your area of expertise. When I was in New Jersey, I was in front of 120 people. It was fabulous. So you never know all you have to do is find them. Also, if you're looking for speakers and you want to know, maybe you have a podcast, going to find out who is speaking at some of those other organizations and then asking them to come speak for you. I get a lot of people booked on my podcast for that. And then they refer me to other ones. 
Is that five minutes? No, no, no. Oh. I, I just want to say, I was on your podcast. I listened back to it the other day and I was just shocked. It was so good. You were a great host. Our banter back and forth was good. The information was awesome. But when you said you were in front of those people and all those, you're talking about virtually still, right? Yes. Okay. Right now they're looking to, um, looking for virtual speakers, right? And you can just speak in, and I didn't know any of the people that were there. I just went and they have a person who books their speakers and I just reached out to them. That's a great way, but also it's a great way to see what other um, experts they have that are in your industry or more importantly, who are a good strategic partner or power partner for you, right? That's really a good way to be able to do that. But with that said, I use a lot of media presence to do that because I am talking about them and talking about, I will literally take like 15 minutes, go find these organizations, find out who's speaking at theirs. And I will literally post something on social media that says something like, oh, I sure wish I lived in New Mexico. That's how I got booked in New Mexico. I would love to hear this girl. She's talking, you know, about, she was actually talking about media. I would really love to hear her. She reached out to me. I had her on my podcast. And then they asked me if I would come and speak in New Mexico too, virtually. So it's a really a good way to be able to do that and to talk about it on media, social media. And it's a good way locally as well. So here, magazines and blogs. There are so many magazines and blogs out there right now. This is really a good time to reach out to them, be guest blogging on other people's blogs. It's a good way to be in magazines. Um, I know that I mentioned earlier that, you know, and Gina did that I am the publisher of a magazine, Marketing Media Money, of which Gina is a columnist for my magazine. So, um, and I think last month you guys had Tom Burkett speak and so is she. But in this case, I reached out to the media because they were looking for people to interview in this magazine. This magazine is not my magazine. It was called the Podcast Magazine. They went and listened to my podcast and literally wrote this, gave me five mics. I think that was kind of interesting, five mics. Um, and pretty much at the end actually said that they consider my podcast binge worthy. Um, so literally this all happened just because I had built a relationship with somebody who did media. So it's really important to really build those relationships. So when they're looking for someone, they contact you and say, oh, Patty, I need this. Do you know somebody or can you talk about this? Can you talk about that? I've been quoted in books and gotten my clients quoted in books or whatever, because they just want one little quote. And it's a great way to get a Wikipedia page too, because you have to have had other people write about you to get a Wikipedia page. So this right here happened just because I knew somebody, I had nurtured that relationship with that media person. And so that's how that happened. So now let's talk about stages and sponsorships. So whether those stages are in person or whether those stages are virtual and sponsorships, they're a great way to leverage your time, your money, resources, and the media, right? You can be using stages, virtual stages, sponsoring. What I like to do is I like to look for events that have sponsors and look and see who the other sponsors are. A lot of times the other sponsors are media, right? And what you want to do is you want to piggyback on that and become a sponsor for something that already has some type of media presence as a sponsor, because now you get to sponsor and the media, because they're a sponsor, they're going to be all over that event. And now you get to become a sponsor too. You don't even have to be there. They even have things like no show ones. And also that's how they get more sponsors. You know, a lot of times I've had Lexus sponsor my events. They never show up. They always let me use their car. But as soon as I say my sponsor is Lexus, it's really easy for me to go out and get other sponsors, right? You know, so you just want to know that they know that they're going to be sharing. They're going to be talking about it. Um, when I moved, um, a couple of years ago when I moved out of town and away from Dallas for 18 months, I did an event. I didn't know one person in that town. I literally hit up every single media outlet. And instead of having a networking mixer, we had a media mixer and I had somebody from every media channel there. And it was really, really great. And we did all these Facebook lives direct at the event with the media people. And we got everybody, all kinds of media, really easy. Believe me, they want to come to events. They want to come to things because they really need things to talk about. You just have to figure out how you are going to spin it. It's like, 
publicity is all about shaping your message, but the media is the megaphone, right? So stick to your brand, know what a hook is, know what twist you're going to give, right? Kind of like how I was talking about that financial advisor, figure out how you're going to make a story make sense. And they want that. I'm also going to tell you that on social media, 90% of all media journalists are on Twitter. That's where they hang out. That's where you should be. <laughs> That's where they are. And share their stuff. Have a conversation with them there. They don't have time all day to be on social media, but they are on Twitter. The thing you have to know is you want to build a relationship with them. I, I don't know how many times I'm going to say that, many, <laughs> but that's really what's important but you really want to leverage your time and your money and your resources and the media build relationships and do things where you're going to be where the media is going to be go to every single media outlet you have in your town and their station has an event page and find out where are they going to be and figure out how you're going to get there that's where you want to be where the media is going to be right and sometimes they'll say oh they're sponsoring this um sometimes they do like walks you know like uh, 10k type of things and they'll be sponsoring those and then so you want to sponsor those like wherever you're going to be where the media is going to be that's where you want to be so one of the best ways that you can take advantage of publicity and to leverage your area of expertise is by being a featured guest on podcasts. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this right now because I want to talk to you about how you're really going to be able to utilize this. So here's a couple things. So hopefully some of you have been guests on podcasts. Here are some of the best ways to get on a podcast if you've never been on one or if there's somebody specific in your industry that you want to be on their podcast, here's how you get known. And these things work from both sides of the mic, whether you're the host or whether you're the guest. So here's some of the things that I have used for myself and for my clients. So if there's a podcast that I want to be on, here's a great way to find really good top podcasts. So I'll just give you one example. You can go to Apple Podcasts, iTunes, and you want to be able to go into whatever your industry is. So for example, my industry is marketing. I go in and search marketing and all the top ones come up. So go in and put whatever your industry is and all the top ones, according to iTunes, are going to come up. And all you have to do is click on each one of them to go to that page and you'll get all the contact information that you need to get a hold of that person. So if you want to be on that podcast, pitching them like that is not going to do it for you. So let me just tell you, here's how you're going to do it. That's why I'm telling you it's not quick. So here's some of the ways you can do it. First of all, do your due diligence and do your work and find out what their podcast is about by listening to it. I can't even tell you how many people pitch podcasts they haven't even listened. Listen to the podcast so you're clear because guess what? Sometimes people have podcasts and they don't actually have guests on them. So what does that say about you if you go pitch somebody for a podcast and they don't even have guests, right? Two, look and see when their last podcast was. A podcast could have been out and they haven't done a podcast in three months. You probably wouldn't want to pitch them either. But once you listen and you establish that this is a good and you understand the format, you want to like it, subscribe to it if it's in your industry and it makes sense, but leave them a review. Then once you leave them a review, here's the three things that I do. I leave them a review. I send them, if I'm not already connected to them on LinkedIn, I connect to them and in the note that I send, I tell them, I really like your podcast. These are the episodes that I listened to. I thought you did really great. I say something genuine that I really liked about it so they know I really did. And then I say, and I left you a five-star review. Well, now they're gonna go check you out right there. Now you are already heads above the rest right there. The second thing I do, and they get that notification. The second thing I do is I go and look on Facebook and see if they have a Facebook business page for that podcast. And if they do, I leave them a five-star review on their business page, which they also get notified on. Once I become a guest and I've been on there, once I'm done and it goes live, then I go to LinkedIn, I leave them a recommendation. 
an actual recommendation that says that how great their podcast was, how much I enjoyed being on it, what a great interviewer they were. These are things that set you apart, but here's what it also does. Other people that are looking at those reviews or those LinkedIn recommendations are going to go, man, I want this girl to come on my podcast. Look at this stuff she does, right? That is going to really make it so people want to have you on their podcast. Here's a couple other things. Don't be one of those people that just when you're on a podcast, get on Facebook and say, oh, I'm so excited to be on XYZ's podcast, which is pretty much what about 60% of the people do, right? Don't do that. What you really want to do is stand out. It's always about standing out. Remember when I talked about being different? So here's one of the secret things that I do. That's my secret ninja tip is once you're on it, now you're promoting it because it's about you, right? So you're going to promote it. You're hoping people are going to see it. You know, you're driving everything to it. That's really great. The podcast world for as many as there are, it is a small enough world that we do talk to each other. Also, anybody that's in my industry, I'm also paying attention to who's guests on their podcast too. I'm paying attention to that because I might want them to come on my, and be a guest on my podcast, right? So here's one of the things that I do. I always like to say the best way you can promote yourself is by promoting others. Promote others to promote yourself. How you do it is you lead with contribution and compensation will follow. That is my mission is really my motto is lead with contribution, compensation will follow. And here's how I do it. So say I'm on somebody's podcast and I'm episode 50. So after I spend a week or so talking about how great it was to be on that podcast and how wonderful they were and all that kind of stuff, the next week what I do is I go look at the episode page on number 50 and I see who is number 48 and who is number 49 and who is number 51 and who is number 52. So who came right before me and who came right after me? And if it's appropriate, right, I promote those podcasts. I don't even know that person. I promote that podcast. I talk about that podcast. I tag them in my social media posts because guess what? Everybody who sees that, me talking about other people, and they go and look at it, I'm sandwiched right between those podcasts. There's no way they can see their podcast that I'm promoting without seeing that I was a guest too. So this is how instead of saying, me, 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 go listen to my on that podcast, I'm talking about other people. When you're speaking on a summit or doing anything, promote the other people, all roads lead back. I do this in my magazine too right? You know, 15 people write articles in my magazine. You're one person. How many times can you say, read my article? But if you promote the other 14 people, it's the same magazine, right? So think about everything you're involved in, in this organization, everything somebody else, one of the other members do, promote them. It makes you look good. Always be promoting others to make yourself look good. There's a lot of ways that you can actually do it especially in media. So whether it is using, so if somebody does do a press release, you know, people say, oh, press releases are dead. Press releases aren't dead. It's just that if you just write a press release in itself, it's not going to do anything. You have to get it on the media. You got to leverage it to the media so it gets picked up. That's how it's going to work, right? So whenever you see anybody doing that, so if somebody that you know, maybe you know in this organization you belong to, if you do, and they put out a press release or they talk about something they do, really honestly, you wanna be talking about how great they are, how wonderful they are, because when that press release gets picked up in other places, they're gonna be looking for comments that are talking about it and then you get picked up too. So you always want to do that. Being on a podcast, you rarely, really, really get free publicity on your area of expertise. Make sure that you are always talking to podcasts where the audience is really your audience, right? Where your ideal audience is. I'm in marketing and I speak on a lot of other marketing ones and I have a lot of marketing people on mine too because we're talking about different perspectives, but you gotta be able to talk about, again, know your brand, what's the thing you're gonna talk to them about so that you're telling them how your business, what you do differently, what your differentiator is, can actually support something that they do. Patty, I'm so glad you shared that. I want to let you know. Did you see my five-minute postcard here? And okay. um, we're trying to educate our organization because a lot of people think liking is, it will go everywhere, but that's not true. Um, if you write just a reply, that doesn't
doesn't go anywhere. But if you hit share and share it out into your personal world, that's what we're trying to teach our membership to start doing. And give your more point of view. More and more. Yes. Because that's what makes you an authority. <laughs> Right, not just an expert. What makes you an authority is when you have the power to influence others, specifically in a purchasing decision. But what you really want is if somebody does something, you want to be able to say, "Oh, and I love the way she did this," because and then give your area of expertise, right? Because that really works. It's not just enough to be able to do anything. It's nice that you like. A like really only lets them know that you liked it. Doesn't actually really help them write something, even if you just write something that says truth, I agree, 100%, whatever, Facebook loves that, but sharing is really where it's at. And it also really makes you look like a giver too. Reciprocity works. I'm glad you told me it was five minutes, so thanks. Okay, we're almost done though. So socialize now to monetize. Now we're three minutes, sorry. Three okay, minutes I'm gonna now. go faster. Socialize to monetize. Keep thinking that. Socialize to monetize. This is really all about making sure you share, share, share. So that was a good segue into that. Share, share, share. It's not just enough to post. Share, share, share. Find out who your best media people are. Share, share, share. Go to Twitter. Find out the journalists that you want to know. Share, share, share. Socialize to monetize. Here's the last media tip I really want to tell you. If you get nothing else, get this. If you're an expert in your field, reach out to journalists, begin building that relationship now. So then you become a trusted advisor and when they need something, they'll come to you. Pitching them in the middle of the emergency, they don't have time right then. Build a relationship with them before that happens so that they can come to you. Give me a quick quote on this, Gina. Can you talk to Patty about this? Can, I, can you talk about five minutes on this? If I get you on the air, could you come down to the studio? This happens because you're a trusted advisor. Start working on that right now. Here's that resources. This is pretty much this. If you have phones, I take your phone out and take a picture of this slide right now. I can also give it to anybody if they want it, but this is really all the resources of how, how to connect with journalists right here and all the websites. So this right here is probably the gold right here. Hope everybody did it. I'll, I can make sure Gina gets it if you don't. Um, and then really, honestly, what I want to be able to say as I wrap up is if anything I said here, like you're thinking, oh, what's the strategy I would use in my business? No problem. Go to connectwithpatty.com and book a call with me, no cost, and we can talk about it. So that's what I would say there. So that's easy to remember, connectwithpatty.com. And here is literally how you can contact me. Here's how we can connect. And I don't know how much time I have. But if I do, I can probably take one or two questions, maybe. So thank question. you so much for having 150, me. 151. Oh, Teresa, go ahead. Um, I, I was always under the thought that you should market your business more when you're busy. Because I see a lot of people, then they're busy. Oh, I don't have time to do this and I don't have time to do that. But when... But then when they slow down, they're like, oh, I don't have enough, I don't have enough business. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I always say you should work in your brilliance and hire other people to work in theirs. So if you don't have time to do it, you should be hiring someone. That's the first thing that I'm going to say, right? If you don't have time to work on your business and in your business, right? Hire someone to do it in their brilliance, right? That's what you really want to be able to do. But it is true. Um, I used to be in the mortgage industry and I used to tell people all the time they waited till the loan closed and then they'd go out and get another loan. No, you need to be, <laughs> that's not how you keep your pipeline full, right? You know, um, so that doesn't work. So you should always be working on your business, right? You know, so I think that is really important and you should always be marketing your business. Marketing is 80% of what you should be doing. Now during everything that's happening, it's like not marketing your business is like turning the stem in on your watch and thinking time won't go by, it, like won't work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Patty. I told you guys, I, am I right? Like, did you take a lot of notes? Look how, many, how much notes I took here. Yeah, a lot of notes. Okay, so awesome. we're going to apply this to PWN. We're going to apply this to our own businesses. I can't wait to see and hear what happens. Thank you, Patty. And Kimberly Angst, I wanted you to introduce yourself. Can you jump on and get off mute real quick and introduce yourself? Okay. Okay. I'm... Say I'm unmuted. Can you see me? Yes. Okay. I right. can't see you, but I, oh. we can hear you. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> um, so how do I, how do I? If you, if you touch your screen, you should mm -hmm. have a video hit. 
Okay. It's crossed okay. out, turn it on. Okay. If not, just go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kimberly Angst at Monterey Skin Aesthetics is my business. Um, I'm a licensed esthetician. I specialize in uh, more clinical based treatments, uh, oncology treatments. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jeannie, you put me on the spot. <laughs> sorry, but you, but we did ours already, just so you okay, know. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm located in Pacific Grove, California. My practice, and I've been an esthetician for well over 25 years. I started my my um, career at the Spot Pebble Beach. And then from there, I went into uh, dermatology practice, and now I have my own practice. Kimberly, is your space open for business right now? Are you um, allowed? Unfortunately, that? we are not currently open. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> Kimberly, awesome. Are you, are you so I'll just describe Kimberly. Since we can't see her, she is I'm sorry. the most beautiful person inside and out. I can't wait for you guys all really to meet her. She was a new member. Then we went into COVID and, you know, it's been hard to connect with, with her. And so can't wait to get back to normal. So go ahead, Tracy, you want to close us out? I'll close it down. And we also have our, our raffle that we have to do. So um, uh, if... I, are all our screens different? Um, okay, so this is how you do it. You ask someone to pick a number and then you go to your participants. You see your list and you yes. count down your list. Then, then you pick the winner that way. Okay, Gina, will you pick a number and Jody, will you do the countdown on the list? Okay, I'm going to choose, uh, it says we have 10 participants. So I'm choosing number eight. You're on mute. Debbie oh. Campbell. Debbie Campbell. Debbie Campbell, Yay. big winner. Yay, of Marilee's awesome. certificate. That's awesome. It's Thank so you. cool. Our newest members have been um, uh, winning those raffles, which is very exciting. So that, that's amazing. Thank okay. you. Well, ladies, it was awesome. Patty, I am just so fired up. I really need to get to know you more and talk to you about some, some things and learn more about your business. Um, and I will be doing that. I'll contact you. Perfect. Kimberly, call me. I have a couple ideas for you. Okay. Um, anybody else? Call me whenever you want. I'm always available. <laughs> and we will but see don't you. call her on Friday night. We're going to dinner. Okay. We are going to dinner. We're going to Antoine's <laughs> and Michelle's. Yes. <laughs> Looking it's forward be to fun. That. And Patty, when you come out, I can't wait to meet you. I hear you're coming out um, someday. <laughs> We're going to try know, to do huh? a workshop. We're going to try to do a workshop as soon as we can. We are. Yes. <laughs> yes. And if you join, you can have a write-off for coming to Monterey. So do I that. can join Monterey even though I don't live there? Yeah. Yes, you can. I, I didn't know that. that. We have members all over the United States. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I didn't know that. We've been reaching out. We've been reaching out. Because we're going to keep a virtual meeting even when we go back to meeting in person. And so... Yes, you're allowed to Oh, I, good to know that. Yeah. Yes. Okay, everyone, love you. Um, really good to see all of you, and we'll see you in October, if not sooner. Thank, Thank you, Patty. Bye-bye. Thanks, Patty. It was great. <laughs>